What's up, Gabe Rooster and Cast Guy here, and it's time to talk about The Last of Us Part 1 Remake Reviews, because this morning, the embargo is up. Every major website from Kinda Funny to Kotaku to IGN and GameSpot are now allowed to talk about their deep dive opinions on this very divisive remake. Now, I have to admit, the scores at some of these review sites are lower than I could have imagined. I was kind of expecting this to get a ton of 10s, and yet... That really isn't the case, but I want to take a look at some of their happiness and some of their criticisms. Let's dive into it. Hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, I am going to be doing my own review of The Last of Us Part 1 Remake on Friday. I have decided to buy the game for $70 myself before I review it just to see, honestly... From what I've witnessed myself, I think the game is a little bit overpriced, and I figured I should buy it in order to properly, you know, put my money where my mouth is. So, starting off, let's check out the Metacritic. As it currently stands, it's sitting at an 88 out of 51 Metacritic aggregate scores. So, 88 is a little bit of a lower average than the last couple entries. Last of Us Part 2 won, like, hundreds of Game Awards, uh, Game of the Year awards. Last of Us Part 1, obviously, won one of the most highly awarded games of all time. Both of those had exceedingly high Metacritics. This is not the biggest step down. I mean, 88 is still extremely good. That's definitely a passing grade, but it's lower, which is kind of shocking for a remake that's supposed to improve every aspect of it. Now, looking at a lot of the websites, you know, VG247, Kind of Funny, Inverse, PlayStation Universe, getting a lot of nines and tens. There's just these couple like eights and uh, 7.5s that drug it down a tiny bit. Now, let's face it, the biggest thing that I think a lot of us are buying this game for is not for the new gameplay. They've said straight up this is the exact same game pretty much. It's about these graphics, but let's take a look at it. So this is just a little teaser trailer they released uh, over for uh, Digital Foundry. Digital Foundry does all these tech breakdowns. Their full video is actually fantastic, but I, I don't want to steal their stuff. Here's a great example, though, of what makes me most intrigued about playing The Last of Us Part 1 Remake is that a lot of these visuals, they've been able to recreate them in a fashion that just technically was not possible back in 2013. When they first made this game, it was, of course, designed for the very funky architecture texture of the PlayStation 3. Now they have the infinite power of the PlayStation 5. Looking at some of these, some of these shots here are extremely impressive, especially this, the glow of fire. These like sunbeams look more realistic. I kind of sometimes like the harsh shadows. There's like, there's much more of an edge to the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 versions that the PlayStation 5 version doesn't quite have. Stuff like this. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, comparing it to Last of Us Part 1 to Last of Us Part 2, that's an interesting way to do it. Wow. So it's it's pretty cool. But this actually brings me right here, AI discussion. This brings me to the biggest criticism I've seen in a bunch of these reviews. I've actually decided to go through a bunch of this stuff, and I've been looking at a lot of these reviews. Like, here's one from Ars Technica. And they're sort of talking about the fact that right now, a lot of this game is more polished. It's beautiful. I mean, the, the visual techniques they've managed to implement are certainly very groundbreaking, but the gameplay itself is just not really up to snuff compared to every other part, like this guy here. So right here, he starts to talk about the fact that the early teases and stuff for the earliest trailers of Last of Us back in 2012 really showed a game that was dynamic and evolving. Characters would react, they'd flip out, killing people was savage and brutal. But obviously, a lot of games, the E3 trailer is better than the actual game plays. In this case, though, Naughty Dog seems like they're trying to upgrade this via brute force. Their idea is just pour in more conditions to the enemy's brains and then let the increased power of the PlayStation 5 juggle all the possibilities. If you kill a human, other baddies are now more likely to call out, wonder why their ally doesn't reply, and move to his or her last known location with their guard up. When enemies know something is up or gone awry, they'll gesture to each other to flank, forcing players to react or scramble more quickly. And when Joel and Ellie truly get the slip on their foes by using a stealthy path, the bad guys realistically 
realistically miss the memo and intelligently scatter to cover as much ground as possible. Infected zombie AI understandably are dumber. This fits the game's tone, and the game's infected-filled sequences were built up for simpler enemies and creepier conditions. Yet even here, Last of Us Part 1 does a better job using sound cues and clearly visible enemy reactions to teach players how to move and when they're pushing the limits. Now, here's what's interesting is that a lot of people, though, are saying that this is something where the enemies don't feel as smart as you may hope. If you're looking for that groundbreaking experience that The Last of Us Part Two managed to pull off, um, it sounds like this isn't quite that. It says right here that smarter enemies make this version of The Last of Us the best one yet, but those updates fail to address an issue with The Last of Us Core. The Last of Us was originally designed for the PlayStation 3, and its worst, Last of Us Part One, still feels like a PlayStation 3 game. This is most evident whenever anyone takes their sweet time to complete a task, which was originally used to mask the PlayStation 3 era load times and to get textures and assets to pop on. The game asks you to hold on, slow down. It's basically so that boosting Ellie up onto a high platform or trying to spend 10 seconds opening a gate. It's so the game could typically try and actually load in extra assets. And so the fact that it still does that seems weird to this reviewer. Similarly, a ton of the game's progress takes place in painfully tight indoor spaces, while outdoor regions are inevitably closed off with fences, locked doors, and massive tangible trees as foliage. As a result, the game constantly slams its foot on the brakes every time its graphics begin to charm you with its upgraded environments. There's definitely a little typo right here, environs. Hmm, that's interesting. So that was my biggest thing is that I did want the game to feel bigger. Obviously now the game is done. It's just whatever we're getting is what we're getting. But my biggest thought was that if they ever decided to do an actual remake of The Last of Us Part 1, where they really put in their power to redo the levels and stuff to be more dynamic and large scale, I always thought that would be the biggest thing of all. Even if they kept that voice acting for another 10 years and the current models and stuff like that, I always wanted to just see more of the scope of Last of Us Part 2 replicated, at least in some fashion, in Last of Us Part 1. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people also seem to be bagging on the writing itself. Uh, now, this is something I sort of disagree with. So here's Game Informer. Uh, obviously, their tweet here sort of sums it up. Since 2013, The Last of Us has been called one of the best games of all time, a landmark achievement for video game storytelling. But ironically, in a world the original game helped create, The Last of Us Part 1 feels ham-fisted, immature, and outdated. Now, uh, I actually read this guy's review pretty in-depth. It's kind of funny because he basically just keeps calling the game very immature, saying that it sounds like a very bad HBO drama that gets canceled after one season. The violence might have been hard to watch, and that might be the point, but clearly, nearly a decade later, at this point, it feels shallow as a shower. Jesus. Like, I I'm not sure I... Like... You can disagree with reviews. This is one that, personally, I don't really like this one, simply because, like, ugh, even this title, I thought The Last of Us was better than this. I kind of like the cheesiness of the original Last of Us, uh, the more black and white nature of the storytelling and stuff, a lot of the evil cannibalistic villains and stuff like that. Hmm. It, it's just interesting that people are sort of looking back on this game in a more negative sense beyond just the beautiful visuals and stuff like that. Here's a 10 out of 10 review, though, that sort of counterbalances a lot of the criticisms that other people have been throwing out, which is from Video Game Chronicle, obviously VGC, and they said that if you can afford that $70 price tag, this is a stunning remake that is truly a triumph. The Last of Us Part 1 is the definitive version of one of the best games ever. Now, a lot of these screenshots and stuff, a lot of this just looks like... Honestly, the game I hoped it would be, seeing how much they managed to make people's facial features, the details on their skin and stuff, it, it definitely looks like the big jump graphically that I hoped it would be. I do find it funny. So just a couple minutes before I started filming this, uh, PlayStation dropped this weird blog post that sort of once again is explaining why they have to call this a remake and not a remaster. Like, like I I'm not sure I've ever seen a game where two days before launch, right as the review embargo is up, 
they're still trying to almost convince you to buy the game. They're still trying to justify its existence. I feel like if these improvements were as drastic and giant as they claim they are, it would be more self-evident. This does look good though. I mean, I have been looking at a lot of like these screenshots and stuff, these side-by-side -side comparisons especially. It is weird to me that Ellie is supposed to be a little kid. This almost looks like the adult version of Ellie shrunk down more. Like, even her scar is more subdued. I always thought that scar was supposed to be more, like, apparent. Like, Joel looks good, although Joel looks way the hell older. I think Joel is supposed to be my age, right? Isn't he? It, right here. Wait a minute. This is where he's older, but he looks younger? What the heck? Right? Last of Us Part 1. I'm not, I'm not crazy. Right here, Joel is my age. This is, this is me. Damn. This man aging like milk. Look at this. Wow, Bill looks fantastic. Wow, look at the detail on the eyes. That is just freaking bonkers. I have to say, obviously, I've already pre-ordered the game. I am going to beat it. I am going to platinum it because I'm a dumb slut. But as it stands, I have to admit that these scores are kind of lower than I hoped. I, I kind of hoped that this was going to be like a 93 on Metacritic. And let's face it, when this game comes out, it's definitely going to get review bombed on Metacritic. So uh, brace yourself for that. But what do you think about The Last of Us Part 1 Remake? Are you excited for it? Does this seem like a Sony cash grab? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do it the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.